Welcome to Locked On Badgers. Did the Badgers get a major steal with their latest basketball commit? We're going to talk about that and more on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Ryan Herring, host of Locked On Badgers. Thank you for making this one of your first listens every day as we continue to build this community. I also want to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for, for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions to apply. And as, as I kind of talked about, we're going to do some basketball recruiting today. I'm going to bring in Jason Jordan from Sports Illustrated, which is the Locked On uh, kind of recruiting insider on the basketball side. Jason, man, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, man, happy to be here. Always. So I want to talk about... This just happened, and a lot of times when a basketball program brings in a walk-on, it's really just as the practice body, a guy to roll out the ball, you know, that player to kind of defend. But the Badgers actually picked up somebody I think is pretty interesting and worth talking about on the walk-on front. Jack Janicki, 6'4", 180-pound shooting guard out of White Bear Lake, Minnesota, with uh, a pretty solid offer list. What yeah. do you think about his game? Is this, is this about as good as you're going to get for a uh, preferred walk-on? Yeah. Now, I've seen some good walk-ons, and he's probably – the tier, he's the, the, the tier you're talking about, probably the best, the best in show tier wise. I mean, I think he had offers from Loyola, Wake, uh, Harvard. He had good offers. <laughs> he he had good offers, but I mean, I get you know you want you want to go where you want to go. Um, so I don't know how they convinced him of that, but hey, hey, I, I'm not mad at that. He's definitely a steal for you guys. Um, I'm pre- I'm pretty sure he played with D1 Minnesota on the Adidas circuit this year. And um, Southpaw Sniper, man, he knocks down shots. Um, saw him a couple at a couple different stops this summer. Um, but knocking down shots, but he also gets to the rim. Decent playmaker. Um, yeah, he put up numbers on the Adidas circuit. Uh, impressive numbers. I mean, you know, you, Wake Forest is offering you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harvard's offering They're not offering no slouches. So definitely a guy that can um, definitely grow in the program and um, a guy that you guys could get strong production from based on what I've seen. Is it, and when you're kind of talking about um, players to fill out recruiting classes, and I, and I know that this is a, a walk on but is this the type of player, if the recruiting class had come down to the wire and the Badgers had one more Scully and they said, all right, we're going to go with Janicky. I mean, I feel like to fill out yeah. your, your scholarship class, this would not be a reach at all. No, he's good. Like he, no, he's good. He, like he, he, look, okay. So the Nike EYBL is by far, and it's not even close the best summer circuit. Mm-hmm in the world adidas is number two right um and i'd say under armor is three sorry under armor and then you go on the chitlin circuit so um yeah he put up numbers on the adidas circuit and you know that's telling in and of itself Uh, and then he has a he has a a strong skill set i would say strong i wouldn't even say solid um he's knocking that shot down nba three-point line extended he's getting to the rack and he's a lefty so um, there are certain most people don't know how to play lefties because, you know, it's not as prevalent, obviously. Um, so but he knows how to use that to his advantage. And he um, yeah, he scores through contact. Um, definitely um, crafty in the way that he gets to the rim and he finishes not super athletic, but um, uh, a guy who gets there and gets it done. And definitely an upgrade, uh, a super upgrade of a walk on even preferred, mm-hmm. preferred or otherwise. Is, and sometimes I think when you're when you're talking about potential role players down the road, right? And obviously, star players come in all like no one's is suggesting that this uh, John Jennings is going to become a star player. But you yeah. never, never know. You can never say for sure. But <laughs> even just in role players, it's kind of do they have at least one skill set that can carry them, right? And yeah. he can shoot the ball, and he's six four, six five. So yeah. why do you think? You know, I wanted to ask you this, and I'm not sure if you have insight on this. Is it possible that, and I don't think it happened here, but you might see more players taking this type of route with their ability to make money off their their name, image, and likeness? Is is this a potential way that players may end up going if they just want to go where they want to go and they know they can make money kind of off NIL? Uh, to be honest, no. I, I think that if a guy, you know, I think more times than not, I think what we'll see is guys go to lower level schools because of the transfer portal popping the way it is. Mm-hmm. I think they'll go there and, and make you know, make the name for themselves and then uh, get the blue bloods and the Wisconsin's and everybody calling the year after. Um, I actually know 
uh, low low major schools that are selling that as as the path, like produce and portal. So um, which is crazy, <laughs> but this is true. So I, I don't yeah, I don't I don't think they're they'd be willing to offset the cost of Wisconsin, you know, for a year. Um, sure. That, I mean, that's that's rare. Now I don't think that'll be like a, I don't think that'll start to be a thing. I don't. I, I can't see that. Not with the, not with his offer list. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, Wake is in the ACC. I mean, Harvard. Come on, Loyola. Yeah. No, it's a great mid major yeah. program. Yeah, 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 for sure. What What about um, and not all offers are are created equally, right? For okay. both football and basketball recruiting, right? Not all not all offers are on the table when somebody commits. Not yeah. all are fully committable. As, as a recruiting fan, if you're following a program, you're following players, and you see a, a really good offer list or a solid offer list like this, is that a way to kind of judge the talent of a player, or is that is that difficult to do just because we don't really know what's committable and what's not? Uh, by and large, I would say yes. It's an indicator that that's probably a talented kid, you know. Um, and coaches, I, I know, I know. Again, I know crazy stories. The coaches are like, I mean, well, if I offer him, and we'll we'll get to see him at some point in the spring. Just you know. <laughs> Or tell them we're interested. You know, DM right. if we're interested, right? We'll we'll get over to seeing with a sight unseen based off the list. So to your point, yeah, I mean, coaches use that. Uh, coaches gauge that as a smoke. So they never admit it, but coaches definitely uh, gauge that as a smoke signal. That oh, this kid is talented. Look who look who's interested. Even not not even offer. Look who's interested in him. Let's at least take a look. You know, especially at a tournament where, you know, a, a Peach Jam or EYBL where it's sit eight courts you know 150 mm-hmm. games yeah they're going to get over there to that court 100 percent. i kind of want to finish up here with john and then i want to move on into our jack sorry and then i want to move on into a player that i think he kind of reminds me of a little bit from last year's class and get your take on connor segian yeah, but well, finish finishing up here with jack is he athletic enough to defend on the perimeter in your opinion is that the biggest question mark do you think in his game yeah definitely um at the college level, not not from day one. I mean, but you know, be clear. That's that's a lot of those. That's the issue with a lot of five stars. I mean, I tell you, mm-hmm. trust me. Ask any top tier coach, and they'll tell you, "Oh my God, who taught this kid how?" This is clearly where you rested during the game <laughs> on the defensive end. I mean, you're really right. you're really special and rare if you're just like bringing that energy on both sides. Most kids rest on defense, right? Um, so that's what I say when I. I always talk about motors and two-way motors. Most kids have a one-way motor, and it's usually when they're trying to get them buckets. But, um, yeah, that's definitely something he'll have. I don't think it's for lack of effort. I just think it's just development, agility-wise, you know, um, footwork. But it's a typical freshman issue that um, I wouldn't just harp on him for. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, coming up with Jason, we're going to talk about uh, la- uh, a sniper out of last year's class and kind of what Jason thinks of him and get into that on Locked On Batters. But first, today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. As you gear up for fall, you need to have all the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. Um, it's something I've used. I've used LinkedIn several times in my career um, on my IT side. I'm also an IT guy. It's helped me professionally get a couple jobs and a couple opportunities. It's the most... It- powerful professional network in the entire world. Over 800 million people have the ability to connect with LinkedIn. And with Lockdown, we're giving you the ability to create a free job post in minutes, free in minutes to blast your job out to this enormous network. Add your job. People at LinkedIn will help you get connected to the right people. There's really powerful tools to screen out applicants that that maybe they're a paper tiger. Maybe they look great, but LinkedIn is able to take a lot of those people that would just waste your time, screen them out, and only the best candidates are going to get to your job, get to your interview, and it's win-win. And it's something that, um, again, we're giving the opportunity to do that for free. Post your job for free. Uh, let 40 million people find your job on LinkedIn. Use linkedin.com slash college. linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions do apply. I want to thank everyone again for making Lockdown Batters one of your first listens every day as we continue to build this community. And both the major sports starting up pretty soon. We're gearing full speed into basketball and football, so really appreciate everyone coming along with that. And bring Jason Jordan, Sports Illustrated uh, recruiting director, back on the show. Uh, Jason, I, I want to talk about Connor Segan from last year's class. Uh, another six mm-hmm. four, quite frankly, physically very similar to Jack Janicki. You know, six yeah. four, one hundred eighty pounds. This, you know, he's out of Indiana, yeah. and we obviously didn't have the opportunity to talk to you at that point. But what did you think of Connor's game? Um, how does he translate to kind of this this level? I loved his game. Um, I watched him uh, multiple times last year with Indy, 
Indiana Elite and the Adidas back to the Adidas, the street stripes we go. Mm-hmm. Um, six four sniper. I mean, the his ability to knock down shots from the perimeter uh tends to overshadow other parts of his game just because that if I'm if you're gonna make me say what's the strongest part about his game, it, it's his ability to knock down shots. Like he he's knocking down shots, but he's a scorer, right? So he's like He's got great instincts. Um, I, I feel like, you know, and, and the thing that gets overshadowed is his ability as a playmaker, whether it's for himself or his teammates. Like, he he gets to the rack. It's not mm-hmm. just shooting. Like, he's – you don't score 70, over 1,700 points in high school um, by being one-dimensional because that's easy to stop. Like, if, if all you're going to do is shoot, and even if you're shooting 100%, well, I can, I can get in your – uh, get in your your grill and you know face guard and stuff. No, but he's getting the ball. He's going by people. He's got he's shifty, and he's athletic too. Like I've seen the kid East Bay in warm ups. Like I mean, between the legs for real. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, he was another one. I always talk about guys like I don't know what we're watching, but he I saw him give some some five star. I'm gonna leave their names out of, it, but I've seen him give some five star kids buckets. And that Adidas gauntlet, uh, well, I shouldn't say gauntlet. Sorry, Adidas. Adidas 3 SSB. Um, but, yeah, definitely a guy I've always been very impressed with. Great size, 6'3", 6'4", um, depending on how he wears his hair. But, you know, a guy definitely who's – you can give him the ball and say score, and he's going to get you that bucket. Now you're getting Badger fans excited talking about somebody in warm-ups going between the legs with the yeah, Isaiah Ryder. He, he Look it up. I'm t- I think he even has videos of it, but he definitely used to do it in the summer. So let me ask you this then, because I thought one of his – so I always thought when you had a player with um, a Seagian's mold, like that kind of Midwestern 6'3 shooter, he always got typecast. Like uh, he's just – I always thought he he had a really unique ability to create space, hit tough shots, shoot off the move, shoot off pin downs, but also, like you said, get to the rack and some three-level scoring. So the question I wanted to ask you is, does he have upside as a primary potentially? Again, we're always talking potential with, with yeah. kids who haven't even played a minute yeah. of D1 basketball, but yeah, could he potentially be the best scorer or the second best scorer on a really good team? Absolutely. Absolutely. He has that three level scoring ability and he's efficient on all three levels. The best part is he he understands game situations. So he has a great feel and he's a guy who I said this about Gabe Cups. Um, you're not going you read Shepherds the same way. Um who is like this Tyler Eulis, you're net, you're not going to speed me up, right? He's mm-hmm. that way. Like it, I get it. You, you think you're gonna come out here and lock me up because you're athletic and you're long and why I've seen this with him last summer. Um, and they'll like try and get a five second half because they think that they can lock him up for whatever reason. Um, and he'll just be so cool as a fan, but he's gonna get to his spots. You're not gonna stop me from getting to my spots, and you're not gonna speed me up. I'm gonna go at my own pace and I'm gonna make the right read. And it's usually Usually has something to do with him scoring, but he's he's a really good playmaker. The vision, mm-hmm. vision is definitely there. He can definitely get a piece of the paint and kick out. So he's a high IQ guy too, and a guy that you guys are gonna love. I really believe that. I wanted to tie it into last week we had you on the show. We talked about uh, John Blackwell, Gus Yaldin, and we talked about shooters with high IQ, right? Yeah. And I wanted to bring that back to Asigian because for for the Badgers, really the last couple of years, there's been no shooting. Even even Johnny Davis going to the NBA wasn't a great shooter from distance. It was Brad Davidson and a whole bunch of just really, really tough shot mate. I mean, people who just weren't hitting shots. So yeah. it looks like they've attacked that with Yaldin, Blackwell, yeah. Asigian. Um, do all those players kind of look like the Badgers are recruiting a certain mold here? Yeah, well, it's clearly they want to add some firepower from that for the, for the reasons you mentioned. And uh, the reason you're going for a guy with a high IQ shooter, and it sounds like, well, yeah, you're going to go for a high, but they're not out there like that. So mm. be clear that every shooter is not, all shooters are not created equal. So you got a lot of guys who are shooters and they're wired. They've always been told, you got the neon green light. When you're open, you let it fly. And that's how most of them are, right? I, I was a shooter, right? So you know that, oh, do you, if I have any space, I'm letting it fly. I don't care, right? Because I can knock down shots with a hand in my face. Well, he's different. Like he's the best kind of shooter because, you know, three point shot is the ultimate equalizer in basketball, right? So you're always keeping the defense off, and they have to have an account for you at all times because of your you're so dangerous from the perimeter. Well, if you're a high IQ guy, you know how to use that to your advantage. You know how to go in there and get a piece of the paint and then kick out to another shooter, right? For a, not a good shot, but a great shot. So you know how to go by and get a guy on your hip 
dish out to a teammate, drop it off to the big man, or just finish through contact, you know, and go to the line or get the and one. So he's a high IQ guy, which is completely different from mm-hmm. uh, just a shooter. Yeah, and the guy's probably going to fit in really good with you yeah. talking the the Yaldens, the Blackwells. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Chucky Hepburn is on the team, a really another high IQ point guard. I, this is another one I wanted to, and we touched on this in the first segment with John Janicki, but I also wanted to touch on it in Asigian because we talked about offers, right? And Asigian is a guy who, for whatever reason, had some really good mid-major offers. The Murray States, you know, yeah. the, the Dayton's, you know, the, the schools that really do know basketball. Creighton was in there, but for the most part, the big schools didn't come after him very hard. At least that's what the offer list kind of indicates. Right. How does a player like that get lost in the shuffle? Because to me, he has that. He again, you talk about skill set. Like the shooting's going to translate. Right. So, and he's got enough size, as you said, three three level score, more athletic than he gets credit for. It felt like he was maybe undervalued. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that unfortunately that happens more times than it doesn't. Have you really, really, really think about it? Um, people don't put a lot of stuff like, oh, well, he's not top 25 we it's just the nature of humans to be like oh well, he's not a mcdonald's all-american right so mm-hmm. um those you know that's 24 spots right doesn't mean top 20 but that's 24 players but a guy who's like in the 60 to 100 range is probably really good right, right? you know um and so you know i think he probably fits that mold you know what i'm saying like i think he probably was even lower i don't even remember what he was ranked, but um I that he's another one I don't understand because he, he put up numbers in the Adidas gone. I always say this Gus, same way we talked about Gus. Like these guys are out here producing, but I think sometimes uh, oftentimes coaches overthink things and coaches, you know, want what they want on the depth chart. And you know, it just depends. Um, I know he had other schools looking at him, but maybe they didn't pull the trigger on the offer. I know he had interest, you know, from other um different schools, high major schools, but um, at the end of the day, you want to go somewhere that wants you there, you know, and that's the best advice I've I ever uh, been told about recruiting. You definitely want to go somewhere that um, wants you bad, not that, not a place that will take you. Right. So um, I think you guys are going to reap the benefit of him being undervalued. I do believe, I do agree that he was undervalued because like I said, Leaving names out of it, I saw him give a couple five star guys some buckets last year, and it was like that too. Like it wasn't like, a, oh man, he just hit an open shot. Nah, he went past you, and right. he went past you again, and he went past you again. So you can't check him. Now I know that you can't guard him. No, we love hearing that. Um, yeah. We're, I mean, obviously every team needs needs a shot maker, but we, yeah. Wisconsin really needs a shot maker. So oh, in the next yeah. couple of years, that'll be fun. Yeah. I, I want to finish up here. So we talked a lot about. You know the, th- the three level scoring, the IQ, the athleticism. I agree with you. I, I I'm really high on the commit. Um, I think I wish they would have added more last year, but I'm really high on Connor. Yeah. However, like, where are you most concerned? Is there a spot where, I mean, a lot of these players, and we talked about this last week. You can say a lot of players need to get, you know, a little better here or there. Everyone's coming into college, but is there something specific with his game that that gives you a little bit of pause? Well, he plays with an edge. I, uh, the first thing that I'm thinking uh, when you ask me that is strength um but i'm not i'm not the guy that says you need to bulk up and get in the gym mm-hmm. two a days no i'm not like that because i always use resi miller as the example i use chet Holmgren as the example these guys are Durant. Like, i mean Durant couldn't bench press the bar I coming mean, out of college guys are like malnutrition but they're <laughs> giving, giving you 50 right 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 um, but i mean i've definitely seen him get bumped off a little bit you know uh different times and i've, I've seen that be an issue before always with specifically guards, you know, on the perimeter, foot speed on the defensive side, um, a great offensive player is probably going to get past him. Um, so that, but again, that's uh, that's a that's a, um, a thing that most guards, specifically uh, point guards and shooting. I say perimeter players, but specifically point guards and scoring guards around his height for sure. Um, that's always a transition. Like I. I, I talked to a kid, high major kid who was uh, he was McDonald's All American who told me that uh, who has expressed frustration for not being able to get it defensively because it's just a different level of foot speed. He's like it's just it's the speed of the game. Like people say, you look at even in the NBA, I've had guys tell me, man, you know, it looks like they're just rolling the balls. That looks like you, you know. I said, but if you go to a game, you see how fast they are. They are, mm-hmm. you know. 
and at college, it's a different level of speed. And then the NBA, obviously, through the root speed. So those were the, those are things I would think would be the biggest transitions for him um, tech and on the technical side. Right. No, that's great. I mean, that's that's a really good write up, though, a really good uh, scouting yeah. report on Connor Siege. And I think that's going to get Badger fans pretty excited. Yeah. Um, coming up, we are going to keep Jason on the show for as long as humanly possible. We're going to talk really quick about maybe the recruiting ceiling for the Badgers. And is there a spot they should shoot for coming up on Lockdown Badgers next? All right, welcome back to Lockdown Badgers. We have Jason Jordan here from Sports Illustrated, uh, college basketball recruiting director. Jason, I wanted to talk to you about this at a high level. Wisconsin, I think all fan bases are probably like this outside of maybe the Kentucky, outside that very, very upper crust. But right. Badger fans have seen a lot of in-state talent leave, a lot of four- and five-star type kids, Jalen Johnson to Duke, Tyler Hero, um, Diamond Stone went to Maryland, you know, there's the Hauser brothers. Is What's Wisconsin's ceiling, in realistic ceiling for recruiting? You know, should they be landing more four- and five-star talent, maybe not even five-star talent, or is that just something that's a bit of a pipe dream for Wisconsin? Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is hmm. uh, so I, I'll say it like this. I I don't hear I talk to a lot of five star kids, right? Uh, in every class, I don't hear Wisconsin as much in conversations with that that kind of kid. Right. I, I don't hear it as much. I may hear, uh, you know, you may see the timeline blessed to receive an offer from Wisconsin, you know, <laughs> that mm-hmm. thing was added. Um, I don't hear that at that tier at the four star fringe five star level yeah i i hear it more so i that almost leads me to believe that there's you know some coaches are of the mindset where we're not you know we're not doing that's not our strategy right so we want to create recruit super talented guys who are going to help us win um but we don't have to get five stars to do that i know coaches who think that way and um it's, it's a good strategy it is a good strategy um, and it's a winning strategy. Um, I can tell you that for sure. So I think that's probably the lane. It, it seems to, like, cause you guys haven't had a five star. I mean, Sam yeah. Decker since, you know, that it would be that's since really that Sam Decker. And yeah. I don't even know if he was a, I don't even know if he was a five. He was a, either a very high four or a low five. He was that's in that not range. Greg. That's not Greg. That's not no, Greg. That was Bo. Yeah. We haven't had one under yeah. Greg. That's what I'm saying. So like, uh, so I don't think he's tripping on that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, but at the end of the day, Wisconsin, uh, the Wisconsin offer the Greg Gard phone call. I'll say this, in the in the in the tier that I'm talking about, that oh I got a call from Coach Gard, that rings out. Now that rings out. Now be clear, like that that isn't like saying I'm not even gonna name a school. That's not saying Timbuktu University call. I mean yeah they call that's good. It's mm-hmm. like a Wisconsin call. I, 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 the excitement is in there for that tier of prospect for sure. Um, I, again, I'm not, I can't lie. I don't, I don't hear Wisconsin ring out in the five star tier that with the kids that I talk to. Um, so that leads me to leave that, that that's their strategy. I, I just think that they're just like, eh, we're not going to get uh, DJ Wagner, Dick G. Wagner, right. not going to Wisconsin. Like Robert Dillingham, 100% is not coming to Wisconsin. Um, that's not a knock. That's just being realistic about where you're at. And I know coaches feel that way. Um, but I think their tier is like the fringe five-star kid and um, who probably should be a five-star. I mean, you got him. You got him. Yeah, no, <laughs> I hear you. Gus, yeah. Yo, Gus. What? <laughs> I'm talking about Gus is handing out buckets. Yeah, I love that dude. Who you name your five-star? He gave him buckets. I promise you he gave him buckets this summer. I, I love it. You. He gave him buckets. So that's all you need to worry about. Who can like those the, the stars and the five, whatever, right? At the end of the day, what did he do? I'm big on that. What did he do? Did he give him buckets? Okay, Gus gave him buckets. Then that's all you need to worry about. And that that kind of leads into the next part of my question was, does it matter, right? So you have a Wisconsin program that certainly hasn't won a title, right? They got really close, but also hasn't missed um, a tournament but one year in the last 25, right? They just they just won the regular season Big Ten title last year, tied for it, right? So does it even matter? Is, is pining for that four- and five-star kid just kind of pointless if the, if the program is as consistent as it's been? Or is it that's the one thing that they need to get them over the hump? Yeah, I mean, to your point, you're winning. So no, it doesn't. Right. Um, you're always going to go for that, the higher tier. You're going to shoot your shot. But 
it's one of the things where it's a win. It's like the icing on the cake. As long as you're winning, it's just the icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just going to help you. Um, it'll it'll ease the ease the ease ease your winning. Let's put it like that. Um, but yeah, as long as you're winning, as long as you're being successful in in what your strategy is, and I think that is their strategy, um, then no, it doesn't matter at all. And people get too caught up in that five star stuff. I mean, it's cool to say that you got a McDonald's All American, but don't make me start with the McDonald's bus because I don't want to call nobody out. But mm-hmm. I mean, don't make me go to that G League roster. That's but, the, where, where McDonald's All Americans go to die. I'm just saying. Right, you could if you wanted to. I could um, do. Let me let me pivot to this one because, and I want to finish up here. This is something a lot of Badger fans have talked about. I have my opinion on it, but I'm I, I want to get your take on it. Does having a lottery pick? in Johnny Davis change the equation at all for Badgers recruiting or is that too much of a, or is that too much of a reach? Does, um, eh, you mean just having saying you Be, have being able, one? cause for a long time, yeah. Badger fans have said, we don't get the high level talent cause we can't point like a Kentucky or a Duke. Certainly we yeah. still can't do that, but we can't point to the lottery guy that we produced. Yeah. Um, today, no, because this, this more more so than it's ever been. This generation is a what have you done for me lately? I was talking the other day about. I talked to a kid the other day, true story, about um, Jay Williams at at Duke, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, oh, I'm telling you, man. Um, we were talking about players or whatever, and he was like, yeah, um, this kid. He was talking about, oh yeah. Uh, I forget who he said. He was like, oh, he was bad. I was like, I'm going to tell you. Um, he, he asked me who's the best player that I've ever seen um, play. And I said, it's probably Jay Williams. Um, the performance-wise, I never forget, he had like 38 points against Kentucky. And the way he scored it was, it was like, oh, my God. I can't believe he made that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, Jay, yeah, Jay, uh, Jay Williams. I'm telling him, he was like. Jay Williams, Jay Williams. I said, "Oh God, I forgot I'm old." <laughs> right? I said, "Yo, he was an All American two years at Duke. He was a National Player of the Year. Right, right. He was a number two overall pick behind Yao Ming. He was a Chicago Bulls. He's just like, so. Did you want to tell me who he is? And I'm oh. like, oh my goodness, you know, Jay, he's on, he's on TV. Like, like he's he's on ESPN. I know you know who ESPN is. The kid did not know who Jay Williams was. So I said that to say, um. If I were to say, um, just to use the same school, just to make it easier, uh, if I were to say Zion Williamson, he'd know. Yeah. Ten years from now, fifteen years from now, that group might not know Zion Williamson because we don't know how it's going to pan out. Maybe Zion keeps eating, and he doesn't play anymore. You know what I'm saying? We don't mm-hmm. know. So um, it's definitely a what have you done for me lately? Like these kids don't remember to do their homework. They're definitely not going to remember a lottery pick from you know back in the day and 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 i mean it like even with you in the den as the coach saying yeah you know this kid was bad this is johnny davis and let me show you some clips and this is him uh at, see this is video of him going to the lottery so we can do that for you they'll be like yeah but i don't know him you know like i don't i didn't see him play i don't know if he was good i don't i don't know that it's not right. gonna, I mean, not even gonna it make literally it just bad. happened it, it just doesn't matter for them no, yeah, yeah, it'd have to literally just happen. They'd have to follow him on Instagram. This is how kids think. I'm telling you, like, yeah, oh yeah, no, but I, I follow him. I, I looked at his story. This, this I hear this all the time. Hmm. No, that's interesting. All right, man. I like always. I do appreciate. It. We are smarter because you're here. Where can people follow uh, what you're doing? Uh, Jason Jordan SI on Twitter. Jason C Jordan uh, on Instagram, and always, all the time, twenty five eight. SI.com college basketball recruiting section. All right, man. Until hopefully next week. Uh, really appreciate you stopping by. Indeed, man. Always glad to be here. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. And as Jason Jordan, everybody, um, again, great, great insight and content. As always, we are smarter because we were able to get him on the show. Really appreciate everybody tuning in to today's Locked on Badgers. Uh, we're going to continue with football, a uh, ton of football content coming up. Uh, open open practice to the media today, so we get that out to everybody, our takes and our reactions to what happened. And until then, um, appreciate it on Wisconsin, and we'll keep giving you guys all the best content we can on Lockdown Badgers.